Continuing with this motorized fader potentiometer project, I want to get several slide pots running at once, so I need a way to distribute logic and motor power along with I squared C control lines to all the pots. PCBWay sponsored this project, which is an LDO distribution power board where I can give 12 volts in along with serial clock and data with a ground from some other controller like an Arduino. Then, with these six onboard adjustable voltage regulators, I have one of them configured to give 5 volts out on this header here, along with serial clock and data and ground, and that will go to one of the fader pots. And each fader pot has a duplicate header like this, so I can daisy chain from the first pot over to the next one and so on to just provide this same 5 volt and I squared C bus to all the pots. But the motor that drives these fade pots can have a starting current up to 800 milliamps. And these LDOs can do one amp of current. So I figure if I want to run all of those pots simultaneously, they're all going to need their own independent voltage regulator. So I have five LDOs here set to give 8 volts and ground for each motor on each pot, if I only want to do up to 5 slide pots. But if I want to try doing more, each LDO has two 8 volt power outputs in parallel, so I could connect up to 10 fader pots if I try using software to maybe stagger starting up one pot and it may use 800 milliamps initially, and if I measure it on the scope, maybe if I see after a couple of hundred milliseconds the current drops dramatically, maybe then I could turn on the next potentiometer, and as long as the average current on each LDO is under 1 amp, I could try to do that. But for now, I'm only using four in this experiment anyway, so I'm just going to connect one on each LDO. The voltage for those potentiometer motors can be between 6 and 11 volts. It says it's rated for 10, so I'm not sure if that's just a recommendation. But I'm setting my LDOs for 8 volts. It worked in initial prototyping. And if there's a maximum dropout voltage on these regulators of 1.3, let's say I want 2 volts minimum overhead. If I'm giving 12 volts in, the max I'd want to maybe give is 10 volts out. So I could give this 10 volt rated motor voltage if I want. I can just recalculate the resistors on the board and change this. But for now I didn't see a need to. So here's a review of the schematic of the actual boards on each slide pot. We take 5 volts and serial clock data in, power the logic on the board, provide the I squared C data, to the ATtiny chip, and we have this duplicate header to pass power and data to the next board. The power supply for the motor comes onto a header, but there's no pass through for this because we're going directly to an 8 volt header on this power supply board so that we can stay within the current limits on each regulator. And here's the schematic of the LDO power distribution board. 12 volts coming in. It just goes to the input of all of these LDO regulators. So this one here gives us 5 volts based on these resistors. And straight to the header we have 5 volts out with the pass through I squared C coming from maybe an Arduino over here just plugging in clock data and ground. And all of these regulators here have the resistors set to give 8 volts out for the motors, possibly running two motors per regulator. And all of these LDOs have a PTC in series rated for a run current up to 900 milliamps. So if we draw too much current getting close to the limit of this LDO, this PTC on any of these regulators will trip. So we just need to power down and possibly wait a little for everything to cool down and power back up to run again. Since I don't have any sort of panel to mount these slide pots to, just for a quick test I'm using some cardboard from shop lights that I recently bought and installed overhead on the workbenches. So the cardboard is rigid enough to mount these fade pots to. And to get the four potentiometers running on this single test setup, the sketch in each individual pot, just as a review, is hard-coded to respond to a specific I squared C address, since there's no configuration jumpers on the board. So all I did is I flashed this code into four pots, but on each one I changed the I squared C address, so it goes 54 hex through 
57 hex. And all this code does in each pot, it waits for a number from 0 to 100 to come in over I squared C, and it will move the position of the fader between 0% at the bottom and 100% at the top. And in the demo Arduino Uno sketch to run four pots, I took the sketch from the original project I did with one pot. I've set it up to be able to talk to the four different I squared C addresses. I made four push button inputs. So as I ground each input in the main loop, it'll just detect what input, if any, were asserted and it will move each of the four pots to a certain percentage of travel from bottom to top as written in each of these sections. So the real schematic for this project would just be the PCB on the individual pots being plugged in where needed for motor, power, and I squared C, 12 volts coming in, and an Arduino Uno with serial clock data and ground connected here. Once everything was set up and ready for test, when I ground input 2 on the Arduino, all the pots should jump up to the 100% position at the top of their range. When I trigger the next switch, they should all go to the 50% travel range, and then the other two are just arbitrary patterns. One of them is more of a diagonal pattern starting at the bottom and going up to the 75% travel area and the final one is just random up down positions so I can trigger these inputs back and forth and make the pots go at least close to the intended area. I still need to try more elaborate software to control these pots. For example, PID control, trying to get the position more exact. And I want to ultimately get more pots running at once and see if I would need maybe two of these boards in order to power everything for up to 10 pots. And I want to try using a bunch of these in projects like a mixing console, adjusting levels for individual channels, or even an EQ where I can just use one pot for each band of frequencies. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project. Thanks for watching.